Hello. Have you played RimWorld? It's amazing. The sea ice tribal start is completely majestic. We started with five colonists, but we lost four of them. We sold two, eight, two, and then one froze to death accidentally. Orange is the last remaining member of the Zoskin Treaty, and since he has survived so long, we give him the title of Wonderful Counselor. After all, today is Christmas, on which this video is released. Although he is a cannibal, inside of him we are one. Do you get it? Because he eats people? Carrying on then, he's an iron-willed, bloodlusting cannibal who enjoys wearing human leather. We've almost run out of firewood, but we have all of these nice shirts and pairs of pants. I can actually just count all of my possessions right here in front of me. This is all that I own. He took the liberty of building a snowman in front of the house, but that wasn't much use. Ah, he's awake now. Let's greet Orange in the morning. Although you might consider him a swarthy cannibal, he's also a genius. Each day he studies more than a foreign exchange student. I believe in orange, and I believe in randomness. So today, instead of making the painstaking journey to Panini Flats and Lega, hope it's actually Pefini Flats, instead we embark upon the exciting adventure of studying for several weeks, at the off chance that maybe some food will fall out of the sky or we'll research technology. We have visitors from the Covenant of Ithwali, Ah, they have a few items to trade. Good thing we didn't embark on that journey. Salutations, visitors. This guy named Paolo has an adulthood of being a dreaded dude. He was a dreaded baby as well. He's founded a crashed spaceship. According to the ship's records, he invented the nuclear device that powered his ship. A truly historical man. Here, meet the wonderful counselor. We will go to him, and a child will be born in Bethlehem. Here we go for the trade. He does. He has good deals for us. We're going to take all of this. Or at the very least, we'll purchase his meals. I need those. And I accept. And so passes on the dreaded baby. Orange makes off with the lion's share of the wealth. Spring has sprung. I spend the rest of my days in repose. Bitch not Han once said in the heart of the Buddha's teaching, when you ask yourself, what am I doing? It'll help you overcome the habit of wanting to complete things quickly, like studying, for example. So instead, smile to yourself and say, Studying is the most important job in my life. And so pass many weeks of hard work, toil, and labor. Studying and eating. These were the only two tasks that Orange knew for the duration of his time at the turn of spring. Orange learns with a burning passion, so his progress is rapid, and research is conducted more steadily and quickly over time. Here we reach spiritual nirvana. Our torch lamp has run out of wood, and we're forced to work in the dark now. This will further slow our research, so we'll need to put another hole in the roof. So we'll take out a roof hole over our desk, and hope that that somehow improves research speed. A new quest has become available. Rewarded fighting. Alexios Paleologa, a member of the Imperium of Z, is making a request. We can fight one drifter pirate for a masterwork revolver. Clearly a good value. I'll fight one pirate in three days for this. The answer is yes. And a meteorite of silver ore is struck. What causes these meteors, I know not. But don't question it. Let's just let's just accept this good. And when Orange is finished with his maximum research for the day, we can send him off to mine. That's another skill to grind in the meantime. Orange is an almost completely pure human being. Soothed by the astrological blessings from on high, he eats nothing but humans, for this shall become the body and blood. And how he labors, how he labors, making steady gains in knowledge, clawing the riches and wealth from the earth. And huzzah, another level has been achieved, the rapidity of research. The gains, we've now dwindled down to merely six more meals, but we know that one more is on the way with a raider. A definite meal, if not several. And here he comes now, it should be one guy. A gentleman with a club, Dunlop. He looks like a Dunlop. He will begin his assault immediately. He enjoys his work and has extremely low expectations. Let's rumble. A shot. Another. I, I think that might have actually done it. He's uh, now at moving 61. We can just start to kite him. Unless if we kill him immediately. Orange has truly improved. 52. Wow. Amazing. And a meal and a club. And here comes the, here comes the masterwork 
uh, revolver. I have done well. Orange wonderful counselor will have the revolver now. I like how they just shot it out of a pod in the sky as if they were watching me like Darth Sidious. I have done well in the eyes of the spaceship people. Well, Orange, you earned the meal. And that looks like a large meal. Uh, a heaping 45 meat and another 28 human leather. Huzzah! Victory. There will be nothing like electricity when we have it. Level 11. A transport pod crash. A warrior named Ra is crashing. Not affiliated with any faction. He is absolutely horrible. Oh, you know the drill. If nothing else, later on it means some clothes, money, food, and scrap metal. The saving grace is that everyone just happens to land from transport pods on this part of the planet. That's the entire fact that makes this challenge work. Oh, sorry Ra, I never said we were the friendliest colony. I never said that I had any medical experience either, but I'm sure that underneath the light of the skylight, I can obtain some quality experience with your operation. There we are, just- oh, we didn't remove the roof yet. Well, let's see how this works. And I doubt I'll get it, but surgery failed. All right, it's not really worth the time. You can just, uh, I am sorry. At least he's sedated. Uh, and now the hypothermia will get the best of him too. And there, 100%. Perfect. He didn't feel a thing. And we'll rebuild that roof for a moment. Nothing to see here. Time and time again, the hunger returns. And if nothing else, this made him more than an amateur doctor. I must say, you and I truly have shared on a journey that has been a myriad of wonderment. The acquisition of new knowledge truly is a pilgrimage of the mind. And we're being raided again. Why would they? Time and time again, I do not understand. Why would anyone come to the Arctic to fight me? Now this gentleman, Kamado, now this woman named Kamado is actually quite good. However, the Masterwork Revolver curiously has 100% accuracy within 12 cells. This means we're guaranteed up close shots. If nothing else, it just bespeaks the power of Masterwork and legendary items in RimWorld. Although never apparent by sprites, they are in fact good. I'm going to stand here by the door because if it doesn't work at first, we'll need to... Oh, I don't even need a backup plan, that was just great. Unfortunately, she died immediately. That's why they call me Wonderful Counselor. I was hoping I would have an opportunity to explain the weapon statistics to you. I really am a geek. That so ends the life of the depressive brawler Saba Komato. Komato. That's food. And even more food. Along comes more food. An opportunity. And this one's going down too. I uh, Now he gets 100% accuracy at this range. Dude! You're supposed to get 100% accuracy. Okay, well, I'm sure it's slow enough that I can run away. Survive? It'll die in five hours. We can outrun it. I doubt it'll make it to the map edge. All it means is more blood everywhere. We just have to outrun it until the effects of blood loss cause it to move more slowly. And there we go, 54. We can afford to take a turn. Three hours. And now it's at 45. I'm sure we can shoot it now. It's- Yep, that's the end of this dog. Job well done. I like that you can clearly see the story on the ground. We can use this for more food. And more food. Sanitize. And get back to studying. And here we go, a bulk goods trader. Exactly what we wanted, now we can buy the rest of the wood that we'll need. And no wood. But they have plenty of meat and lots of steel. You got yourself a goddamn deal. That's plenty of steel and meat for survival and electricity when we get it. We'll have enough for light and power as soon as we've researched it. In fact, I think I'll make one more deal. I'm gonna sell even more meat and buy more steel so that I can replace the walls with steel. That'll give me the wood from the house itself and I can use that to burn my way to power. The art of the sale. What this means for now is that we'll We'll deconstruct our wood walls. We'll rebuild the roof over my bench. We'll refuel the torch, put up walls along here of steel, and prevent the structure from collapsing. We'll finish the rest with steel, and we should have enough to build corners and further insulate ourselves. It's not really necessary at this time of year, but I'm kind of a completionist. But we now face the problem that it's actually too warm inside. The meat is starting to spoil again. It'll have only 4.8 more days, so we're working on about 2 or 3 degrees of temperature. It's too bad it didn't stay winter any longer in this position. And this may come as a surprise, but we're actually going to put a spot for our mead in front of the house. If it's too warm inside, we'll have to store it outside. And we'll just have to make this into a small pantry at the front of the house. This gives us a few walls to fall behind in case of an attack. And better temperature management as well. More spacecraft have landed nearby. We can also use this room to clear out our main room and make it more beautiful. Although Orange isn't picky, it's been bothering me since the beginning. And we've now fixed the temperature in the room such that he's researching at a better speed. 70 degrees in Fahrenheit. 
And still in the main room out front, it's about the same as the outdoor temperature. The human meat is going to spoil soon. We'll actually need to cook it into meals to preserve it longer. And this adds shelf life to our food. It's a subtle change, but this should keep him alive for a few more days while we wait for more events. Orange has now steadily increased his pace of research and will be done with the second half much faster than the first. And we've reached summer. It's actually too hot now. The temperature is still at freezing, but it's nowhere near the winter temperatures. I really want to speed along the pace of our research, so I'm just going to deconstruct this stool. And maybe use that for more firewood. There we have it now, we're nearing the end of these meals. But research couldn't be better. An arctic fox makes another fine meal for orange, as the temperatures are actually becoming too hot to maintain food. That's another kill. But now, having reached level 12, Orange deals with the sad reality of being better than everyone at something. Every moment that he doesn't spend researching, he will get worse at it. And he needs to be constantly glued to a table in order to make any progress. A feeling I am told only very high level Christians experience at some point during their careers. We have a visitor. She has a few items to trade. Perhaps some food. Ironically, we become the hungriest in the summer. Ah, the perfect food source. Pemmican. We'll take all that she's got. While I'd like to keep it, this revolver just isn't worth it anymore. And I can sell her the rest of my weapons. Beyond this, I'll need to sell her one of my parkas. While it's a very good parka, I just need the food more. It's risky not to take it. And we'll accept. And a new quest. The Hares in Hudson. Chased by a pack of two man-hunting hares. Join me, Hudson. And Hudson is joining us. Let's check him out. A tough man with a chemical fascination. And the Manhunter pack of rabbits now. Uh, okay. I think this will go extremely well. And here we begin with the hares. One down. And the second. Two shots and shouldn't take any more. This one should be, that was supposed to be a guaranteed hit. Okay, we need to run. Hopefully I won't be bit by the hare. And I was not bit by the hare. I honestly didn't think that would happen, but we are now outrunning the hare. This is one determined rabbit, and that does it. It'd be a bit of a risk, but well, I, I don't care. We'll decide later on whether we want to keep Hudson, but for now we can just use him to mine out the rest of this silver while we research. Think of him as a temporary guest of honor. Already they hate each other. I don't think this guy will get along with non-cannibals very well when we try to integrate them together. Well, he's already on a minor break risk. I just don't think he's gonna hold up. If living at this colony were like a part in a play, this would be like his audition. He just hasn't made the cut. We can still use him for the silver that he's mined though, and take that silver. I'm. I'm really just trying to prevent him from destroying the silver if he throws a tantrum. And he has gone berserk. What a great place to go berserk. Far from the house. In the meantime, Orange is just about finished with the electricity. I couldn't have planned this any better. He's hardly eaten any of the food and he's gotten so much work done. Unfortunately, the temperature is getting very high and we're going to be running out of meals soon, so I think you know what this means for Hudson. Unfortunately, he just wasn't as open to growth as I thought he would be. And you know what that means. Strangely, since he's just had a catharsis, he's just going to accept his fate. He has extremely low expectations, and both of these things together are probably just going to cause him to faint in the water. A comfortable end. And this gives us an opportunity to create a distraction for a pack of scaria-infested rats roaming through the region. The two... Uh, two, to be exact. Fortunately, we can use him for cover while the, uh, while the rats glance us innocuously. Here we are, just at, at Orange's max range, we'll run Hudson back and forth in case if they do, uh, in case if they do get too close. It looks like they are getting pretty close, so I am a little scared. They're just, okay, never mind. Well, this is unfortunate. They've hit him, and we'll just use this as an opportunity. I'm gonna say it was nice knowing you. It was nice knowing you. And wow, this guy could really take a hit. Jeez, he's still not, there we are. Finish it. Oh my God, this is like, Jesus. Well, that was, uh, that was, that didn't feel too good. Hopefully I won't get scarier, but there's plenty of time. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. One truly is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. And I anticipate a reality when Orange has light and friends. And at long last, we have enough for electricity. Obviously, the first thing we'll want is a battery, but we'll get to work on this right away. Ah, uh, so many more options now than before. I'm thinking the only thing that we really have is wind, so we'll go with that. It may not be sustainable or reliable, but... Really all that we've got out here. We'll give this one a little bit of space from our base, but not too much. We'll need room for further building, but we can always change our minds later. 
completed. And now we'll just run a power line up through that. And that gives us enough to deconstruct our torch. Then we can put a lamp in its place and let there be light. And we have light, finally. Of course, it's inconsistent light, but that's the best we can do for now. But now I am nearly out of food. I have only... 29 left. And we got another quest. Cosmos Volcanic Winter. But I did say I would do anything for money. I'll take it. Good. That gives us more things. We can sell these things. Oh. It looks like dinner has arrived. Now we won't need to go on a quest. Now we... We have dinner. This guy isn't very good, but... He'll make a good meal. Hey man, all of these meals keep arriving. Well, this is, after all, why we played this character. What an absolute relief. I thought that was the end. Three, okay. Yeah, he's whiffing now. Four. Shot only in the right shoulder, though. We need another. And another. Good. Torso, right arm. The right lung. He, ooh, he destroyed his right lung. That's all you need to do. Well done, Orange. Okay, let's have another one of those blood trails. Yeah, all it takes is a good chest wound. Excellent, excellent. And that's just how the cookie crumbles, folks. We'll take all of your money, and we'll take you, and we'll use you, and we will serve it. Get it? And we will serve you. Get it? We will serve you. It's a dark joke, a very dark joke. Oh, we don't want that to happen again, so let's set off on a journey, but I think that's that's plenty for one day. Yeah, after today, we'll desperately need to trade because we're low on food. But I think we'll call it there. We'll let Orange keep doing his thing. So far, this has been a splendid colony. Very prosperous, very wealthy. I really do love a good beginning and a good skill grind, and I think I've gotten that out of this. I hope that you feel that same way. You know, I could never play much beyond the first or second gym in Pokemon because everything always seemed to just fall apart. I love the feeling of the outset of a new enterprise. There's nothing that replaces the early steps of progress. That and the fulfillment from seeing a low stat bar quickly give me results. I don't care to reach the high levels, I just want the lower ones. But I'm sure there'll be more ways that we can channel that same beginner energy. Well, I think that we'll leave Orange here, chilling in the Arctic. And that's probably everything for now. As always, thanks to my patrons, you, you really do it for me. You just, you do it for me. And thanks to you for watching. A festive Yuletide greeting to you, whatever you celebrate and, and I'll see you in the next video. As always, my name's Ambiguous Amphibian. Goodbye.